Hey guys, over the next few videos, I will attempt to explain and demonstrate the key findings in Blender that have enabled me to create this helmet that we're looking at here. Because I had a vague idea of what I wanted to create, the need for a fluent work pipe was essential. In this video, I want to show you how Blender's modifiers helped to create this free flow, say non-destructive construction method. I have to say coming from Maya with its destructive workflow, Blender's modifiers have reinvigorated my excitement for creating 3D assets. Okay, so let's get into it. What I'll be demonstrating in this video is how I built the blue panels that sit on the helmet. There are two on the sides and one at the front over the nose cone and they are highlighted with the uh, orange outline. These were created with Blender's modifiers allowing me to update and edit them throughout the design and construction of the helmet. So to demonstrate this clearly, I'll open up an earlier save of the helmet. Okay, so you can see how the helmet changed a lot over the construction slash design of the model. The outer panel that is highlighted with its edge loops has been built non-destructively as I'll demonstrate. So going into vertice mode, if I select the vertice and move it, you'll notice how the panel updates. So this non-destructive panel was constantly re-edited throughout the uh, design and construction of the helmet. Okay, so let's look at how to create, how to make these panels. To start with, we need to create a polygon patch that will add that we will add a bunch of modifiers to. This patch effectively is created through a retop process. So what I'll be showing you is what I do to retop a model, but here I'm just retopping a patch. So let's get rid of the outer panel. So we're now exposing the inner object, which was the visor, and I sculpted this in Blender, which is awesome. So what I'll be doing is I'm going to add a patch to this. So to do that, what I need to do is create a plane to start with. So let's just create a plane. Pressing G, I'm going to move that to the side. Pressing S, let's size that down. Tab, let's go into edit mode and add some extra edge loops to it. So control R, roll the scroll wheel and double click. Control R. Okay, so there, so by adding some extra edges or vertices, this panel will now be able to uh, adhere itself to the uh, base model a lot better. So what I need to do next is turn on snapping. So I need to go up to the snapping tools up at the top of the viewport. And you need to make sure that you've got face turned on and project individual elements. Pressing A, selecting all. Press R, 90. Press Y in the Y axis. I've just rotated that object 90 degrees in the Y. Now, making sure that snapping is turned on. So, I always fall into this trap of setting my snapping and not actually turning it on. Because turning it on, you need to actually click on the little icon to the left of the settings. Okay, now pressing G and moving that object to the base mesh. You can see now it has stuck to it. Just like glue. Awesome. Okay, let's go into vert mode and let's move these some of these verts around. G. Okay, now, as you can see, the plane is hard to see. So what you'll need to do, or what I tend to do, is I, need, I go into the viewport display settings and I will turn, I will select this little option here in front. And what that will do, that will ensure that your plane is rendering in front of any object behind it. Okay, so let's just clean it up a little bit. Bring that vertice in. That one, that one. Great. Okay, so now we have our patch. So all I'm going to do now is add a, a number of modifiers to turn that into a panel. So, okay, and the one word of warning here is I am using hard ops. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the modifier stack. So if you don't have hard ops, the add on. You'll have to go into the modify uh, the the panel over here, and you'll have to add your modifiers through this manual process. 
if you're very serious about hard surface modeling, it is essential that you go out and purchase the add-on called HardOps. Okay, so going into object mode, Q brings up the HardOps menu. First uh, modifier I want to apply is, actually I've got to select that and that. Let's do that once again. I have to add a shrink wrap modifier. And because I selected the patch first and the base model second, HardOps already knows and then applies the modifier uh, appropriately. So now I have, uh, now that patch is now shrink wrapped to the model. So if I move the model around, the patch will move with it. Next modifier is the subdivision modifier. So that just makes it nice and smooth. Um, I can increase, increase the resolution of that as I, as I like through the subdivision uh, modifier, but I'll leave it at the default. Next modifier, which is my favorite one, is the solidifier. So by adding that, I now can create some depth to the uh, panel. That looks exactly like what I would get if I was using ZBrush's extract. But the advantage here is this is non-destructive, so I can edit this at any time throughout uh, my construction phase of whatever I'm building. So next two two more modifiers I like to add. One, uh, the next one is a bevel. So just to, to prevent it from looking too computer generated, you know, with that really hard 90 degree artificial edge. Okay, and the last modifier, I always add this to everything is a, a weighted normal. That just ensures that the, the normals are all kind of facing in the right direction. And there you go. So now if I want to, let's just uh, uh, minimize all the modifiers, just so I can see it a little easier, or I can get to them a little easier. The solidifier, now if I just increase and decrease that. I can now play around with that. Super cool. And if I go into edit mode, I can select a vert and move it around and that panel will rebuild itself according to the plane that is adhered itself to the, um, the base mesh. Okay, and it's just before I wind up, finish this video, because I'm using some sub Ds and for those who haven't used them before, if you want to ensure that these edges are sharp, so if I turn the subdivision modifier off, you'll see that the base mesh has a hard edge and the sub D is rounding that off. You want to prevent that from doing that. What you'll need to do is just go into the, uh, well select the edges that you want to um, sharpen, go into the end panel and just increase and decrease the, the crease value here. And that will force, um, Blender's subdivision to you know, adhere more rigidly or closely to the base mesh. Cool. Okay, guys. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something from it. And I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.